Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Destroyer Pilots Manifesto, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about the individual destroyers in EVE Echoes. In today's video, I thought it'd be fun to do the complete opposite of what we did in Lesson 1. In Lesson 1, we had a look at getting started with destroyers and which ships you're going to start with. In this video, I thought it'd be fun to have a look at the Thrasher Covert Ops, which is a Tech 10 destroyer, thus giving you kind of an insight into the destroyer endgame, what you're ultimately training towards. So what we're going to do in this video then is of course have a look at the Thrasher Covert Ops and compare it to the Thrasher Fleet issue, just to see how the two compare side by side and what makes the Thrasher Covert Ops special. Now if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, and of course let me know in the con uh, comment section down below what topics, what ships you want to see me cover in future content. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, I do have a Patreon, details are on screen now, and that's getting revamped as we speak, and we now have a merchandise store over on Redbubble, so if you've ever fancied representing either the Cat Skull Academy or Captain Benzie, etc, on something like a hoodie or stickers or water bottles, head over, take a look at the merch, there's a couple of designs on there already, with plenty more on the way. Now, of course, it goes without saying that because this is a Tech 10 destroyer, and at the time of me making this video, currently no one on the live server is higher than Tech Level 8, I am, of course, filming this on the Fulmination Content Creator Test Server. And I just want to spend a very brief moment addressing a couple of concerns that I've seen raised all over the internet, whether it's Reddit, Twitter, all over the place. Now, as a content creator, I receive no form of kickback from uh, Netties at all. I pay for my own Omega for all three of my different characters so that I can showcase different things for you. I have COG3 across all of those to make sure it's as best as possible. I'm running an alliance and a corporation um, and trying to sort of push that forward as best as possible. I receive no financial or like gain or kickback from Netties at all. The only thing I do get is access to this Fulmination test server which allows me to create any ship I like or any item I like so I can magic up any ship and fit it with any modules I like for testing purposes. Now obviously that gives me no advantage on the live server whatsoever. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED talk, let's jump right in and talk about the Thrasher Covert Ops. The Covert Ops Destroyers are the Tech 10 variants of the mainline turret destroyers, so the Coercer for the Amar Empire, the Cormorant for the Kaldari State, and the Catalyst for the Galante Federation. Now, it should come as no surprise then that if I was going to showcase one of these in a video, of course it's going to be the Thrasher Covert Ops, because the Thrasher line of destroyers is probably one of my favourite hulls in the entirety of EVE Echoes. So, if we head to the Minmata Republic to ship tree, to the destroyer branch and climb it all the way up to tech level 10, here we have the Thrasher Covert Ops. Now, at the time of writing, this basically uses the same skin as the Thrasher Interdictor. And if we actually have a look at its skin here on the top panel here on its basic info page, you can see this does actually differ slightly from the Thrasher, uh, Thrasher Interdictor at tech level 6. So I am concerned that there may be a skin change on the way here and that this is just a placeholder. So do sort of stand by on that. Otherwise, though, it is an ebony black um, Thrasher hull, which to me is just awesome. I love the look of this thing, I love the interdictor, I love the Thrasher hull. This is just a win-win-win for me. Anyway, let's then have a look at those attributes and fittings, and as I said, we are going to be comparing these across the board to the Thrasher fleet issue, so two strap in, there's going to be a lot of percentages and up and downs here. Now first and foremost, we have the attribute profile, that fitting profile of four high slots, three mid slots, four low slots, three combat rigs, and three engineering rigs. Now compared to the Thrasher fleet issue, that is an additional low slot, it's an additional of each of the rigs. That in itself is already very useful, and um, that low slot, even if we ignore the whole covert ops thing, which we'll come to in a moment, means you can add extra tank or you can add extra damage through things like weapon upgrade modules or shield uh, adaptive and vulnerability fields, shield boosters, that kind of kind of thing in those low slots. The additional rig there also means that you can you don't have to choose as much between adding additional damage with things like cannon collision accelerators and burst aerators and things like the anti-electromagnetic screen reinforcer or the shield boosting modules, that kind of thing. You do get a little bit more variety and option with those rigs. 
Now, defensively speaking, the Thrasher Covert Ops has 6,995 hit points. That is comparative to the uh, the fleet issues, 4,772. That is a massive 46% increase across the board, although that's not entirely being accurate, as the Thrasher Fleet issue did get a 5% bonus of shield for each point you had in uh, just basic destroyer command, which means actually, theoretically, the shields are only a 17% increase, um, but the armor and structure do still get a full whopping 46% increase on the Covert Ops here over the fleet issue. If we jump back up as well to the power grid, the power grid here of the Thrasher Covert Ops is 61 megawatts as standard. That's compared to a 49 megawatts on the Thrasher fleet issue, which again is a 24% increase. It's a big jump between the fleet issue and the Covert Ops, which in fairness you should kind of expect considering you're jumping from Tech 5 to Tech 10. But hey, there we go, it's just nice to compare the actual uh, effectiveness, I think. The capacitor bank here is 646 gigajoules compared to the fleet issues 477, a 35% increase, and now the signature radius. This is where things really get interesting. Now, if we jump ahead very briefly to the trait description here, you can see that the Thrasher Covert Ops not only has that typical Thrasher mainline turret destroyer bonus of 25% increase to small cannon optimal range, it also gets that roll bonus of can, uh, can fit Covert Ops cloaking devices, but in regards to its skill bonuses, we have advanced destroyer defense upgrade here, giving us plus 5% flight velocity and minus 4% signature radius. At full training of level 5, that is of course 25% flight velocity, 20% reduction to the signature radius. Finally then, Advanced Destroyer Command gives a bonus of 18% small cannon damage per level. That is a massive 90% increase to small cannon damage. Compare that to the fleet issue, which from small cannon operation gets a 7.5% uh, per level. That's a 37.5% increase compared to the 90% increase here. You'll notice that the Covert Ops though does lose that tracking speed bonus, so it doesn't have the extra bonus to tracking speed on its turrets, which does mean that, okay, you're increasing the DPS massively, but the application's not quite as good, but yeah, that's, you know, neither really here nor there. You also don't get that plus 5% shield, plus 5% scan resolution, or plus 5% sensor strength um, that you get from Destroyer Command either on the fleet issue, so there's a couple of variants there. Anyway, the reason I mention this now is because here we have a signature radius of 36 meters. Now, that in itself is a 25% reduction on the 48.3 meters of the fleet issue as standard. But if you're training there into um, into ad uh, advanced destroyer defense and getting that 20% reduction to signature radius, that actually pushes this all the way down to 28.8, which is a 40% reduction on the signature radius compared to the fleet issue. That makes this a tiny ship. 28.8 meters is literally on the smaller end of frigates. Many frigates are bigger than the, uh, the Thrasher Covert Ops with that signature radius reduction. If we then look at the flight velocity, again, 333 meters per second is a standard increase of 12% over the fleet issues at 297 meters per second. But again, we have that bonus. Advanced Destroyer Defense Upgrade gives 5% flight velocity per level. If you add that 25% flight velocity, you should be looking at a basic flight velocity of 416.25, which is a 40% increase over the fleet issue. This is a very fast moving destroyer with a very small signature radius. And 100% this is a viable speed tank ship, as we'll see in a moment. If we look at the scan resolution, this is where actually the Covert Ops and the Fleet issue do have a little bit of a back and forth going on. Now, the scan resolution here is 664, and the Fleet issue has a standard 587. Now, on paper, that looks like a 13% increase to the scan resolution, 13% faster lock-on speed. That's always going to be nice. However, the Fleet issue does get that bonus from Destroyer Command of additional scan resolution, 5% per level of Destroyer Command, which takes it up to 733.75. That means you actually lose 10% scan resolution here on the Covert Ops. Now, of course, you can repair that with rigging if you think that that's something that you do need to sort of address. As we come down to the warp speed, you'll see we've gone up to 5.5 astronomical units per second. That's right up there with some of the fastest uh, frigates. And that, again, is compared to the fleet issues 4.5. Then, finally, mass and inertia. 
Now the fleet issue has a mass of 1.6 million kilograms and a 1.9 inertia, whereas here on the Covert Ops we've got a 1.235 million kilograms and a 1.9 times inertia. That means the inertia modifier is the same, but we have a significantly lighter ship, almost a quarter lighter, 23% lighter. This means that this can accelerate and decelerate faster, you can turn and realign quicker, and you're able to maintain a sharper orbit with the Thrasher Covert Ops than you could with the fleet issue, which is very useful to know considering we get that additional uh, flight velocity and that lower signature radius, making this a very, very viable speed tank. Now, whilst the Thrasher Covert Ops can definitely be fitted with strike cannons, and if that's a build you're interested in, check out the Thrasher Fleet Issue video. I go over the strike cannon fitting there. Essentially, you'd replicate that here on the Covert Ops, just you'd add in the additional Covert Ops cloaking device into that extra low slot. And ultimately, that would then give you a strike cannon Thrasher Covert Ops build. But I personally feel that with the bonuses that the Covert Ops uh, Thrasher gets, plus the fact that it is a Covert Ops ship, it's thus used for scouting, I believe that a Captain Benzie special up close some personal auto cannon brawling build just fits it that little bit better. Now, the build that I'm showcasing here on screen now as well, I just want to make it clear that I'm doing this on a budget. I'm showcasing this here using entirely, with one exception, meta level 6 gear. This is nice and cheap to fit. We're not using sort of the top tier Gisty C types right here, and this is the ship that I use in the combat demonstration later just to showcase how this can do it on a budget. Now, Republic Fleet small auto cannons, you can see there, even though they're only the meta level 6 versions, we're getting a very respectable DPS of 462.03. That's an insane amount of damage, and that to me is the kind of damage that destroyers really should be doing already. But again, I'd like to see this one get an additional high slot, just so it's kicking that damage up into overdrive. It's a tech 10 destroyer, it should have very high damage. But anyway, 462 is definitely nothing to sniff at. Admittedly, yes, okay, that's only at the optimal range of 1.88 kilometers, which is very short, but the Covert Ops Thrasher can maintain quite comfortably a speedy little orbit at 2 to 3 kilometers, at which point you are still getting about 90% of that DPS. So 90% of the 462 is still a lot of damage, and we've got a very high tracking speed of 512, so these turrets are actually able to keep up with the high angular velocity that we're going to have. Now, I mentioned that there is one exception to the meta level 6 rule on this fitting, and that's the Vrykalarkas small energy Nosferatu. This is a meta level 8 version simply because the meta level 6 Nosferatu is, of course, an Imperial Navy Nosferatu, and I just could not bring myself to putting a Mar Navy gear onto a Thrasher. I've not done it yet, I don't think I ever will if I can help it. In fact, I would rather have gone for the, is it Moat, the, the meta level 5 version, rather than a meta level six just because of that yes i'm that much of a purist all right <laughs> anyway for the other mid slots then we've gone for a republic fleet warp scrambler and a republic fleet stasis web of fire now again this is mainly just to help those turrets if they do need to uh, slow something down um just to catch it like a fast moving drone and if we've got a ship that like say a condor 2 interceptor we can whack off its micro warp drive with the warp scrambler and then the stasis web of fire just locks it in place um for us to obliterate it nice and quickly ultimately the faster we can take out those smaller ships the better and um, ultimately the webifier only gets used really in that kind of situation and ultimately the webifier is the slot here in those mids that you can swap out you can swap out quite comfortably here for something like a tracking disruptor or indeed a, uh, a guidance disruptor depending if you're going up against missiles or turrets, um, and that will really help with survivability. I'm just kind of putting the Web of Fire in because it's the one I had lying around, but theoretically for PvE, you should probably swap this for a Guidance Disruptor or a Tracking Disruptor, depending on what you're going up against. It will just give you that extra level of survivability. Now, in the low slots, first and foremost, I've gone for a Republic Fleet Gyro Stabilizer. That's helping us reach that 462 DPS. That's a 5% flat damage bonus and a 4.12 reduction to the activation time just for having it fitted. And of course, if you activate a Gyro Stabilizer, like with all of the weapon upgrade modules, we get an additional 8.24% damage bonus and the 4.12 is increased by 400% for the activation time. So much faster firing, much higher damage, um, gives a significant boost in DPS for the duration of 
that gyro stabilizes activation. Now, of course, we then have a covert ops cloaking device. If we've got a covert ops ship, I kind of feel like you really should put a cloaking device on there. But if you're absolutely adamant you don't want one, um, again, this can either be another gyro stabilizer for additional damage or an adaptive invulnerability field for that little bit extra of survivability, that kind of thing. Ultimately, it's up to you what you'd swap the cloaking device out for. I'd like to keep the cloaking device just because I think it's really useful. Um, certainly if you're going in like a Thrasher Wolfpack roam, then having a covert ops with a cloaking device is a really cool way to do things. You jump into anomalies, you jump to where you think your opponent is going to be, you can then scout it out with that cloaking device. Heck, even if you decide that actually you know, you, you're know, you not going to uh, warp away, then warp back in all in one go, you can just drop the cloak, immediately everyone warps to your position, and if you've got something like an interceptor uh, frigate, they can immediately lock onto the target, lock them down with whatever points they have, whilst the rest of your destroyers jump in um, and, and blap them off the grid. And that said, my personal preference is to have a Covert Ops uh, Destroyer here with something like a Guardian um, and, and an Interdictor. They jump in and then the Interdictor just drops that sphere and bam, it's, it's kind of game over. And you're sticking entirely with the Thrasher line as well, which thematically just looks awesome. Now, in regards to tank, I've gone for a Republic Fleet Medium Shield Booster. Now, thanks to me having enough skills in uh, Destroyer Engineering, I can fit a Medium Shield Booster in here. That's also, obviously, uh, the Shield Booster skill skill as well um, will reduce the amount of power grid required to fit a medium shield booster and of course I've got that at Expert 5 along with things like Destroyer Engineering Expert 5. You may find that a medium shield booster can't be fitted but in fairness by the time you're tech level 10 you probably should have most of these skills maxed out as well. So by the time you're flying this, this does seem like a reasonable thing to have. Now of course it's a medium shield booster, that means we are not cap stable with this, 1 minute 18, but if I were to unequip the uh, unfit the Republic Fleet medium, uh, medium shield shield booster there, you'll see that we do actually drop all the way back down to capacitor stable and of course my internet is going to be absolutely terrible and slow and not let me actually showcase that properly but hey there we go you may just have to trust me oh no there we go we're losing connection completely huzzah got to love Zimbabwean internet Okay, we are now back, and I'm going to leave that in the video just to showcase to you guys what I have to put up with sometimes, and why I don't necessarily get involved in much in the way in fleet operations. I tend to watch from a distance and observe that kind of thing, rather than necessarily get involved in anything particularly important myself, just because, yay, that's my internet and that's what can happen. But anyway, with the uh, with the medium shield booster taken off, in fact, you'll see we've gone down to cap stability. If I try and fit a small uh, stable shield here, uh, a small shield booster here, you'll see that that keeps keeps us at capacitors stable as well. It's only destabilized once we have that Republic Fleet medium shield booster active. And of course, it's such a big boost, we don't really need to keep it active. You just activate it for a cycle when you need to. It does about 15% of the Covert Ops' shield in one activation, and then you just let it run down to 15, uh, down that 15% again, activate it for a single activation, and bam, you bump yourself back up. If you really need to in a pinch, like you're taking an extraordinary amount of damage, then yes, you can keep this running for up to 1 minute 18 but you will suffer obviously if you drop below 25% capacitor it's mainly there just to quickly activate and boost up any damage that your shield takes we are focusing mainly on speed tanking which of course then means Republic Fleet small afterburner for our propulsion module here of course, flight velocity 187% increase, a quality bonus of, I think that's, I can never count this off the top of my head, half a million kilograms added onto the weight, which of course does impact our inertia modifier, um, but not enough. We're still able to maintain two to three kilometer orbit, which is really, really useful here. And it's very low on the power grid requirement, on its activation cost, all that kind of thing compared to a micro warp drive. And of course, it doesn't increase our signature radius either. We've got a very small signature radius. You can probably get away with a micro warp Warp drive, but yeah, in fairness, I just don't think it's necessary. The extra speed from the micro warp drive kind of gets counteracted by the fact that you need to make stay nice and close. Use a micro warp drive, sure, if you're going for a strike cannon fit, but for an auto cannon brawling build, 100% the afterburner is a better option for you. Now, in regards to the rigs, huzzah, surprise, surprise, they're all tier one 
rigs. Again, I told you I'm doing this on a budget. What we're looking at here is a cannon collision accelerator and two cannon burst aerators. That is the very best way to get the maximum DPS out of your rig slots. Burst aerators are better than collision accelerators for the most part, um, but of course there is a penalty for stacking multiple. Now two burst aerators is actually better than a burst and a collision, um, but three burst aerators is not better than a two bursts and a collision. I've done the numbers on this, I've tried this out, 100% collision burst burst is your best way of getting maximum DPS out of this. Now for the engineering rigs, I've gone for auxiliary thrusters times two and a polycarbon engine housing. Again, we're leaning into the idea of speed tanking here, so additional flight velocity from the auxiliary thrusters means we move faster, plus the polycarbon engine housing just helps us drop that inertia modifier a little bit more so that we can maintain that tight orbit. Now I do actually want to showcase what happens if we do fit higher tier gear onto this. So I've actually got a second Thrasher Covert Ops, which we're gonna set active now. And this is one that I've outfitted with top tier modules. This is all stuff that is theoretically available on live. I haven't put any of the super special top secret modules on that everyone seems to think Fulmination has. Um, but I have gone for full Gisty C-type um, where possible and tier four rigs. Is this exactly the same fit? All of these are the exact same rigs as we saw before. So we've got a cannon collision accelerator, two burst aerators, two auxiliary thrusters, and a polycarbon engine housing for the rigs. For the high slots, we swapped to Gisty C type smalls. For the mid slots, we're now at Predators um, and still have Freakalarkus because, again, it's the, the, the best one you can get. There's no dead space for mid slots most of the time. And um, we've got for a disaster medium shield booster here simply because the Gistum C type medium doesn't quite fit. We don't quite have the power grid to fit a Gistum C type medium shield booster, but we can get up to disaster. That's with having a smoke covert ops cloak, a Gistum C type gyro stabilizer, and a Corelli C type small afterburner. Now, this, as you can see, gives us a rather large increase to our DPS of 641.8. And this is what I've said before. A lot of people have argued that skill points are the most important thing in Eve Echoes. They're not. Skill points are what you use to meet minimum points. If you have a ship like the Thrasher Covert Ops that's getting bonuses to Advanced Destroyer Defense Upgrade and Advanced Destroyer Command, then you need to get both of those skills to 5. Once those skills are at 5, any additional points you put in those skills don't really make that much of a difference. Same with engineering. Once you've got enough engineering to actually fit the modules that you need, anything extra doesn't really help. Once you hit those minimum posts and um, with your skill points, gear becomes much more important. And you can show, I see that here in that what we've done is swap out all of the tech level 6 gear, the meta level 6, into meta level uh, 11 gear, and suddenly we're all the way up at 641.8 DPS. That is utterly monstrous, and that's cold. That's before we activate it. We've got a navigation flight velocity there, 811.69 basic. Again, that's before we put the afterburner on, alongside all of the others there. Nice solid defense as well, 10,549 very solid there um, and certainly though for the combat section I am going to jump back into the Thrasher Covert Ops with all the meta level 6 gear and then we're going to jump into a Tech 10 Anomaly just to showcase that it can do, sorry not a Tech 10 Anomaly, a Tech 10 Encounter to showcase that this meta level 6 ship can comfortably clear that um, thanks to how it can speed tank. Here we are then in a Tanolen or Tanolan or however heck you pronounce this. We're going to jump here into Survival of the Fittest, which is a Tech 10 expert version of this encounter, as you'll see from the uh, tech level of the ships when we arrive. I'm going to put the Covert Ops cloak in here to showcase what I talk about in regards to PvE and PvE, uh, PvE and PvP, and why this cloak can be useful. It allows us to warp in. We get into our anomaly or our encounter or whatever. We can look and spend a bit of time here looking at what ships we have. So we've got a couple of Condor 2 Interceptors, a um, Moa, um, a Deserter Raven, and a Ferox 2, uh, which will be a Ferox 2 Guardian. We can also see if there is some other like PvP ship in there that we want to be able to take out, find our target. I can now warp away to safety. I know what these ships are all equipped with, so I'm going to come back here towards uh, this mine drill, um, mine drill mining station. Um, I've walked in at 100 kilometers just because it's a little bit further away. We're going to deactivate the cloak, jump back in, this time again about 30 kilometers away from survival of the fittest, because I know that none of those ships are going to pose a significant problem to me, and I know which ones I need to take out first, which of course are going to 
be those Condor 2 interceptors. Tech level 10 interceptor frigates cause a problem for almost everything. They are nasty little ships. Can't wait to fly one myself. Anyway, now that we're here, I can lock onto everything because I know that we've got uh, I've, I've got enough skills to lock onto all, uh, all five ships. Once we're locked on, I'm going to pick the closest of these, the Deserter Condor 2 there. We're going to hit orbit, activate that afterburner, and zip into combat. Now I know that my turrets are theoretically effective from about 20 kilometers, but I'm going to wait until the Weber fires on, activate the gyro stabilizer and my turrets, and straight away there we go. One hit, straight away we're halfway into the Condor 2, almost killed it in two hits, third hit takes it out of combat. Onto the second one, Deserter Condor 2 Interceptor, again we lock onto that, start firing. We're taking very little damage here. Now, these are missile anomalies, and of course, <laughs> for some reason, in anomalies like this, missiles always seem to hit you. No matter how good your speed tank is, missiles always seem to do at least some damage. Now, that's missiles always hit. Yes, that's true. Missiles do always hit, but they don't necessarily apply their damage well at all. And here, I kind of feel like anomalies with missiles still kind of hit a bit harder than you might like them to. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, obviously, being a fan of speed tanking, but hey, there we go. It's me biased. So on to the deserter mower interdictor. So we're going to start taking this one down. Bit of a heavy shield tank here. You can see it takes a bit of damage. A few shots to take. There we go, activate that medium shield booster for one activation just to top up the damage, and then we continue on our way. Just one activation, um, two activations, so I didn't actually switch it off in time, um, is enough to get us back to 100%. We can start pulling down that mower interdictor. There we go, down it goes, onto the Ferox 2 Guardian. Obviously, Ferox 2 Guardian is going to be a nice, fairly tanky ship anyway, especially for a ship this size. Um, 460 DPS is still pretty good, but not when you've got a ship with this much health. does still take a bit of time to get through. But, again, we are not taking much damage at all. Nothing that the Shield Booster can't handle, and as I'm watching this back to myself and commenta uh, commentating over it, I see that once again I have left that Medium Shield Booster active. You can see it does actually, it takes quite a while for me to train my capacitor. It is down to 41% now, thanks to me activating the Gyro Stabilizer, because I'm getting bored of uh, this Ferox Duke Guardian. I want to kill it. Um, I'm hoping that at some point soon I do notice that that Shield Booster has been left active. And by the time I get the alert that my capacitor is getting low, screaming at me, that should be enough that I go, oh, wait, I've left that on. And there we go. I finally turn it off. God, watching these back sometimes and commentating over it really does make me realize how terribly um, distracted I sometimes get in combat, like watching the ship, the mesmerizing orbit of a thrasher. Um, completely forgetting to turn off the uh, the shield booster. But you can see that that uh, Nosferatu then, I, I mean, this is why I did it. I totally did it on purpose. I got my uh, capacitor nice and low just to showcase how quickly that Nosferatu can pull us back to uh, all the way up to 70%. You know, that's, that's clearly why I did it, honest. <laughs> But yeah, without the shield booster active, we are completely capacitor stable. Actually, we're capacitor stable without the Nosferatu active. It will recharge um, the capacitor over time um, with nothing active there, with just the afterburner. The afterburner on its own is enough to maintain capacitor stability, plus activating the gyro stabilizer. Afterburner and gyro stabilizer is not enough for us to destabilize our capacitor. Um, if you want to be using the warp disruptor and the Weber fire, then yes, that's when you need to start putting the Nosferatu one. In fact, actually, I say that. I think, actually, it's still stable, even with the uh, Weber fire and the warp scrambler on, without the Nosferatu. Um, it's only once you have the... Uh, only once you have the shield booster active that it does destabilize to the point where the Nosferatu ultimately serves as just a recharge function. Theoretically, you could put in something like a capacitor battery into a low slot, but what are you going to take out for that capacitor battery? I mean, you either lose your propulsion module, which is just a flat no, you lose your uh, ability to repair your shields, which again is a flat no, or we've got the gyro stabilizer or the covert ops cloak. I suppose you could lose the covert ops cloak if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. There goes the Ferox 2 Guardian. We're now on to the deserter raven not a raven striker this time just a raven still tanky as all heck gonna take a long time to pull this one down but okay you could take the covert ops cloak off for a battery but i just uh, i don't see the point i don't see the point the nosferatu is more than enough and what are you swapping the nosferatu out for um as i said if you want to put something like a tracking disruptor or a guidance disruptor on there definitely viable options that's when you would go then with swapping out the Weber fire. Um, leave the scrambler 
obviously because it can turn off micro warp drives and thus make the micro warp drive interceptor ships that little bit easier to hit. Plus, the Nosferatu allows you to recharge your battery quite nicely. You could theoretically, actually, I suppose, pop a neutralizer on there if you're going heavy into a PvP build with your mates. Um, for a solo PvP, yeah, it could also work. Just sort of mothballing this, uh, sorry, spitballing this as we uh, <laughs> as we sit here orbiting this Raven, because as you can see, it's taking a long time to go through. And we there I go past. Look at how fast this thing moves and how quickly it's firing those shots. It's, the auto cannons are the proper Gatling guns of Eve. Definitely very, very fast uh, rate of fire. You can just see how fast this uh, this this covert ops shoots past there. Anyway, this is going to get exceptionally boring with me just talking here, going wee every time the covert ops destroyer goes past there in the distance. Um, so I think what I'm going to do at this point is actually skip ahead um, to the point where this raven goes down and we move into the second wave, just to showcase what happens when the second wave of a combat anomaly does spawn. At this point, we're about nine minutes into this anomaly, which when you consider that it's a Tech 10 anomaly being taken out by a destroyer, um, and you consider the fact that we're only using meta level six gear, I personally don't think that's too bad, but boy, am I happy to see the end of that Raven. I think a good half of that wave's time was just taking out the Raven, and oof, here comes those lag spikes. Yay, good fun times. So anyway, we've locked onto the next wave now. Again, it is going to be those Condor 2 interceptors that we go for first. At this point, if you think that actually I'm not sure what's going on here, you can warp out, activate that uh, Covert Ops cloak, come back in and get a look at the second wave again. For me though, I'm quite happy here. I know what's coming in this wave. It's mainly Condor 2 interceptors, plus we've got the uh, the mower interdictor, we've got the, uh, the Ferox 2 Guardian, another Raven, and a Cormorant Covert Ops. And these aren't too much of a threat to me at all, so I can quite happily again just lock onto the targets I want to, start with the small targets, work my way up to the larger ones, take out those interceptors, now we move on to the uh, the Cormorant Covert Ops there. Now I'm going to take this as evidence that the Thrasher Covert Ops is just significantly better than the Cormorant Covert Ops, clearly, clearly that's the case here, I mean it's a Minmatar ship, we know that Minmatar ships are better than Kaldari ships, right, they're definitely better than Amar ones. Um, <laughs> but you can see we're ripping through that Cormorant Cover Ops nice and quickly. It's going to go down hopefully in the next hit or two, so we are going to now start to move towards that mower um, interdictor so that we can take that out. There we are, Tech 10 mowered interdictor. Move towards it, start to apply that damage. And you can see the main threat in this wave, those smaller, faster moving ships, has now gone. The big ones, even though they're hitting me with missiles and um, with speed, you know, and, and thus are still getting through my speed tank slightly, it's nothing that my capacitor and that medium shield booster cannot handle. So we are quite comfortably able to complete this. Now the Gisty C types, I have tested those in some anomalies. I know the Tech 6 storylines 100% are doable with the Tech 10 uh, Tech 10 uh, Covert Ops Thrasher with the Gisty C type gear with that Metal Level 8 Dead Space, uh, Metal Level 11 Dead Space gear. Um, I did manage to solo a Tech 7 um, Inquisitor anomaly. I have to try to remember if it was an Inquisitor or a Scout. Um, an Angel Inquisitor anomaly was soloed with the uh, Thrasher. That's Rasha Covert Ops. I'm not sure I would go all the way up to Dead Space, and I'm not sure that Tech 10 storylines are something I would overly try. Um, they should theoretically be possible if you're careful, if you draw the waves out. But again, you're kind of then looking at how long it's going to take to do a Tech 10 storyline and the Isky Wern, compared to the time it takes to do something like a Tech 7 storyline mission and the amount of Isk that that earns. To me, the Isk per hour there works out much better. And I know what a lot of people are going to put in the comments. Yes, but hang on, Benzi, can't something like a, you know, an Apocalypse Striker do this even better? Well, yes, theoretically it can, but compare the cost of the ships. And again, as I said in the Destroyer Pilot Manifesto Level 1, I don't just mean the cost of the ships themselves, but also the cost of the skills required required to train into it. This is destroyer level skills. These are cheap in ISK, cheap in skill points. By time you're tech level 10, you should be able to have everything you need for frigates and destroyers all the way up to expert five. Heck, I'm tech level eight and I've almost completed everything that I want for frigates. It's literally just frigate defense upgrade and frigate, um, 
frigate command that are at expert four and just going up to expert five currently then it's onto the small weapon systems and getting those finalized destroyer command etc destroyer engineering i've already got those to expert four and i'm sitting here at tech level eight so yeah you can definitely have this fully trained up by tech level 10. by the time you're hitting tech level 10 and those battleships become a thing though are you going to have all the skills you need to pilot them effectively at the moment you get them well maybe but then i'd argue you've got a lot less variety whereas i've got access to every single frigate every single destroyer um, whether they're lasers railguns cannons or otherwise to me i think that wins but that's me being biased as a small ship pilot i like my frigates i like my destroyers i like my versatility and my variety there we go. Anyway, folks, I think this does wrap up everything to say about the Covert Ops Thrasher here. I am now just orbiting this Ferox 2 Guardian, taking it down very slowly, and then it's onto another blasted Raven, and that's just going to take forever to kill. So I am going to end this one here. Thank you ever so much for watching this one right to the end, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!